What does a good church look like? Here is a really divisive and often a very selfishly driven subject. Well, a bad church is easy to find, easy to describe and perhaps easy for us to point out. And it's very humanly subjective. And I don't think a perfect church exists once we as imperfect people get involved with it, especially because church is a place of people. So what is a church and what is a good church? Well, the biblical word that's used is ecclesia. And Jesus used this word in Matthew 16, 18. He talked about on this rock, I will build my church. And the church isn't just about being built in a particular place. Or, or something like that. It's much more about a gathering of connected people than it is about a building or a style of doing something. There's nothing in the Bible that talks about denominations or different versions of Christianity or religion. It's all about a relationship with Jesus Christ. And that relationship causes us as people to want to identify together, to gather together, to assemble together on purpose for purpose and that purpose is Jesus. That is why it is described as being Jesus's church. So there are a few good models and examples in the Bible of what God's people, ecclesia, a church, should look like. One of the best models is perhaps that of a good functional family. Don't think dysfunctional family, don't think problems, think about the ideal aspect of family. And Jesus calls me and you to be his brothers. He calls us to be brethren together. He adopts us into his family. He takes care of us. We've got those family rights, those family responsibilities. Um, actually, that's a great model. The other model that's often used is that of a body model, where each part has a specific purpose. We acknowledge its differences. We acknowledge that we all need each other to make the body work properly and both of those two models have one thing in common that is Jesus at the head setting the direction leading everything in the right way it's really good the other model that's often used is this idea of being grafted into the vine that is Jesus and that is where all our growth then comes from, all our health comes from, all our purpose comes from, all our nutrients come from. And we fruit for the vine and the vine fruits to grow strength for us. It's where our personal identity gets connected into, we're grafted into Christ. That's where we belong and that's a great idea of what a good church can look like. Um, OK, that's a sort of a philosophical idea about what church is. But what should a good church do? Um, what does it look like in practice? Well, let's have a look from the early disciples in the beginning of Acts. The Holy Spirit has just come. We're in Acts 2, 42. And it says they devoted themselves to the apostles teachings, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled in awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the full favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So a few little points to pick out in the middle of this. The church was gathering, the people of God, the ecclesia were gathering together. They gathered for teaching, they gathered for fellowship, they gathered to remember Jesus, they gathered to pray together, they gathered to evangelise through the Holy Spirit, they supported one another, they encouraged one another, they praised God together. They had massive favour in the communities that they were in and because of all those things they grew and grew and grew. Now that is a great model for what church should be. So aside from some of that, here are some of the things that I think are important for a good church. And I think number one is that a church really needs to be alive. It's not dead 
or boring, but church should be a reflection of the living Jesus Christ, a reflection of heaven. And that isn't boring or stiff upper lipped, but it is vibrant, exciting, noisy, bustling with people, filled with praise. Yeah, there's a place of peace and tranquility, but actually, more often than not in the Bible, heaven is really known for clashing singles and choirs praising and shouting. And, and actually, a good church should be alive and filled with noise and the praises of God in a vibrant way. So here's another one then. A good church should serve God's purpose and not man's tradition. Do you know there's a lot of religious tradition that gets wrapped up in church life. And church was not designed to be a place that was filled with tradition, but with God's presence. And actually it shouldn't be filled with tradition that's just for tradition's sake. Church should be filled with God's purpose. It shouldn't be filled with tradition that man's brought because God didn't prescribe those routines to us unless he did in the Bible. And there's a difference between those. But often we've got tradition and our religious practices because of something that once worked or to help us remember something. So it's not always bad, but what we need to do is keep capturing what is God's purpose? What is God's purpose in every part of church? Because we need to be capturing that to function towards what God's purpose for church is. So we've got lots of verses that relate to church in the Bible as well. And here's just a few of them for you. Church should be a gathering of people. In Matthew 18, verse 20, Jesus said, where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. Church should always remember Jesus's death and resurrection. In 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23, for I receive from the Lord what I'm also passing on to you. And then he talks about how Jesus broke the bread and the wine and, and talked about who Jesus was and what he was. Church should be a place of discipleship with teaching and direction. It should have elders and leaders that help us focus into the important things of life to grow in our journey with Christ. We should be fulfilling the great commission of going into all the world and telling everybody about Jesus. It's really important to do. We should be worshiping together and encouraging together. Here's a passage from Ephesians 5 verse 18 to 20 and it says, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Church should also be a place for the Holy Spirit to move and grow his church. In 1 Corinthians 14 verse 26, when you come together, each of you should have a hymn in your heart, a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, an interpretation. Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. And in Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, classic passage about church. Let us consider how we may spur one another on in love and good towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. At Destiny, we have three things that we'd really like to define our church, and that is word, worship and witness. Word is all about getting into the Bible, training and keeping in line with the Bible. We make preaching the Bible a really big priority. You're doing that right now by listening to this teaching. The second one is all about worship. We want to help you to learn how to be a worshipper in every part of life, to connect with God and to praise him. And then number three is all about witnessing. That is developing our lives to be a witness for who Jesus Christ is and to tell other people about Jesus in all that we do. No church is perfect and every church has a different purpose from God. But those three things of word, worship and witness, we believe are what God has asked us to do here at Destiny Wakefield. Okay, a key verse for you. Ephesians 5 verse 23, Christ is the head of of the church. It's his body of which he is the saviour. That's the important thing to remember about church. So what did Jesus do? Well, Jesus built his church. He trained his disciples, the apostles, to create good church. And then he gave us the Holy Spirit, which really was the setup for the church. It's how the church was established and grew 
and Jesus' church was all about advancing and bringing the kingdom of God here on earth. That was his model for it. And next steps. Well, you are his church when you gather together. So be it, do it, grow it, live it and be part of it. If you're not involved in a good church, I want to encourage you, find one and become part of it.